the guy who's, you know, training Manny Pacquiao. You think that, um, what? He's a Mayweather fan, though. He, that, that's biased, too, right? Let's go to some other expert opinions, you know what I mean? Never mind the fact that, um, Manny Pacquiao's own trainer doesn't feel that he won the fight. He doesn't feel that he did enough. Never mind that. Let's just go to some more expert opinions and see what some other guys think. What did you think of the result, Mike? Yeah, I think What's up, everybody? Hope you're all doing well. I wanted to talk about scoring fights and some of the bullshit pushed by certain boxing fans. Fanboys, really. So, after Mayweather got the decision over Pacquiao, and there was a lot of controversy afterward with uh, the majority thinking that Pacquiao had won the fight. I'm talking about the world now, not just your little American or UK bubble. I'm talking about the world. Most of the world thought Pacquiao won the fight. You know, there was a lot of debate online and a few people, myself and Artorias Boxing, had made HD video punch count showing you how Pacquiao not only landed more punches than Mayweather, he landed the better punches, right? In HD. Uh, but apparently a lot of Flomos got really butt hurt about that and they made their little lame-ass rebuttals, right? So-called rebuttals. And this was one of them. Low Ring IQ had made a video in which he's pushing... Uh, a popular fallacy, basically. Look, the only reason why I say that most people thought that Pacquiao won the fight is because that is the truth. And, and it's something that most English speakers are completely ignore, ignorant of. They don't seem to know this because they live in their bubble because Showtime and HBO commentators brainwashed them and they've been communicating with other English-speaking people who are influenced by that English-speaking broadcast and, you know, it is what it is. So the only reason, again, why I brought up the fact that most people, I mean, fuck, go watch, even though this is English-speaking people, go watch some of the Australians that made videos about that fight. Go, go look at what they had to say. Most of them had Pacquiao winning clearly. That's what Australia thought. The Latin-speaking countries, I mean, Artorias made a video with whole broadcasting team saying that Pacquiao won the fight. Right? I'm not saying that there were no people in Latin America who didn't think Mayweather won, because there were quite a few of them. But the majority and the TV broadcasters in Latin America... Thought that Pacquiao won the fight. <laughs> because he did. Anyway. Ring IQ. Or should I say low ring IQ. Is pushing a popular fallacy. Not only is he. Dishonest. He's just cherry picking. People. Showing you people who thought that. Mayweather won the fight. Right. He's not showing you countless. People who said that. Pacquiao won the fight. Like Lomachenko. Holyfield, Shane Mosley actually, the first interview they did with him after the fight, he said, Pacquiao won the fight, that's what he said. And then they pressured him to say something different, and he started singing a different song after that. But right after the fight, he said, Pacquiao edged it. That's what he said. You can find it on YouTube, it's, it's out there. Anyway, you know, it's easy to just cherry pick and say, oh, well, these people thought he won the fight, blah, 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 right? But... It's not even important. It doesn't matter because, and I keep going back to this classic argument all the time, you know, the majority of the world thought the earth was flat at one point, and then the majority thought that it was round. And here we are again with a lot of people, I'm not saying the majority, but a strong push for the flat earth yet again, right? So... Whatever you, you think this planet is, and shit, for all, all I know, it could be a cube. The majority, at one point in time, maybe always, 
has been wrong. So just because you're in the majority, that doesn't make you right, which is why it's the popular fallacy. You can't use that as an argument. Just because the majority thinks something, that doesn't mean anything. It's just, it's a fallacy, okay? And there's quite a bit of dishonesty here because, again, the guy is just cherry-picking one side. He's not talking about the fact that it was controversial and a lot of people, the majority actually, had Pacquiao winning, right? So, long story short, how does the opinion of anybody change what actually happened in the ring? It doesn't. So, when people like myself and Artorias Boxing made videos in HD, in slow motion, for all the slow pokes out there, showing you what actually happened in the fight and breaking it down, those were the most credible, most honest at least biased breakdowns, right? To sit there and talk about what certain people said as some, some sort of evidence when it isn't is not intellectually honest. To sit there and cherry pick a few moments from the fight as evidence of the entire fight, as a representation of the entire fight, is intellectually dishonest. And that's exactly what low ring IQ the deceitful troll that he is did, right? Come on, man. You got to be you got to be a little bit more honest than that. But so so you're going to see two clips that he cherry picked, right? He cherry picked two clips to show how Mayweather won the fight. So arguably, I would imagine seeing as he put so much work into his videos and editing, he found two best moments of of Mayweather's, right? Let's see what they are. In super oh. slow motion. I think um, Manny started um, exchanging one punch at a time with him, and he was top shot at Manny. Oh, here we go. You mean like you did right here, Mike? <laughs> oh my God! Mayweather didn't even touch him. Manny started. I know, um, I know the quality is shit. And that's another thing. Again, when I dropped my video, I gave it to you in HD. I didn't flip the screen around. I don't know Dying what he's doing there. You mean like he did right here, Mike? He didn't land anything there. Mayweather didn't touch Pacquiao. I mean, maybe the glove touched Manny him. Manny started um, exchanging one but punch But there was no impact. Look at it. Shot Where Manny. are these punches? You mean like he did... Okay, that first... Well, I guess it's the, it's the left hand. Because it's... The video is the fire, I think, um, It did graze Pacquiao, started, no doubt about it. Um, the first left hand grazed him. At a time when he grazed him. Right? And then, nothing. You mean like he did Pacquiao's right here, Mike? <laughs> like that? Let's watch it in slow motion. Oh, this is crazy. one punch at a time when he was top shot in Manny. So. Graze. Okay, that's a scoring blow. Not very effective. Graze them there, graze them there. It's it's fine if you want to call those scoring blows, but the first one was good. But the the next two, they didn't make any contact. The knuckles of Mayweather didn't make any contact. I'm not saying the glove didn't touch Pacquiao's face, but you got to make impact. Your punches have to be effective. You understand? Anyway. Let's look at that shit again right quick. Come on, Mike. Hurry up. There he grazes Pacquiao, right? Oh, that's a good blow. Nothing special, but it's scoring. Right? Pacquiao takes it away from him. Nothing there. And nothing there. There's no impact. And Mayweather stepped on Pacquiao's foot. So it looked maybe like something happened when nothing really happened there. But, you know, Mayweather did score there. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to take it away from him. But that's, that's the best moment? That's the best you can do? Look at Kenny Bayless telling Mayweather not to step on his foot, right? Half speed. 
Nothing. He didn't land anything. Now what about this? What happened there? This is this is one of Mayweather's best moments. He just got sent back by a left hand from Pacquiao. How, what did these people watch? What, what are they looking at when they watch these fights? That score, don't get me wrong, but that? There was no score there. You gotta land, people. Don't, doesn't anybody know anything about boxing anymore? It really seems like people just don't know boxing. Here we go. Right? Mayweather doesn't land. Pacquiao misses. Maybe he touched him with the with the right hand Mayweather, but if he did, it, it didn't do anything. The right hand didn't do anything if it did land. I, I couldn't really see it. And then he hits him with the elbow, right? And gets sent back by Pacquiao's left hand. So maybe Mayweather landed the right hand in that exchange, but Pacquiao landed his left hand, which sent Mayweather back, right? This is about clean and effective punching. So even though Mayweather looked to make contact with his glove, right? There's only one punch landing there. Did you see Pacquiao's shoulder roll? Anybody? <laughs> Boom! Pacquiao stayed planted as they both landed, it looked like. Mayweather shot, it was hard to see if it landed or not. But let's just say both made impact. And Pacquiao's left hand sent Mayweather back. <laughs> oh, that motherfucker needs glasses, man. A lot of you need glasses. Boom! You see that? He sends Mayweather back, effectively winning that exchange. Clearly winning that exchange. But these are the best moments this clown could find. This person is deluded. Those are the best moments you could find from Mayweather in that fight. And guess what? They probably were. Because Mayweather couldn't land shit on Pacquiao. Except some elbows and, and stuff. But anyway, I wanted to talk about scoring fights. There was this interesting article about the WBC Walter Wade Turney or Evander Holyfield's Walter Wade Turney, sponsored by the WBC. And they're talking about scoring criteria, right? Which is basically universal. Here you go. The standardized scoring criteria includes the following categories. Clean, effective punching. That's the first and foremost scoring criteria. Clean and effective punching, right? This is the sport of boxing, meaning punching. And then control, which is a combination of ring generalship, effective aggression, and defense. Now... In the last few years, a lot of Amero bum fanboys, fanboys of these cowards that get in the ring and run away from their opponents, have warped what scoring fights really is to give an unfair advantage to these guys that are afraid of confrontation in the ring. They're afraid of boxing, right? This is the affirmative action I keep talking about. You got... Guys like Mayweather, who doesn't have a lot of boxing skill, you know, guys that run away from the fight, and like Erislandi Lara, for example, or Terence Crawford in certain, certain fights, they run away from the fight, they're not throwing any punches, and all of a sudden, the fact that they're running away is being called ring generalship. The fact that their opponent cannot catch up with them is counted against them because it's not effective aggression, and then the guy running away is getting points for a quote-unquote defense. When that's not defense, that's running away. Clean and effective punching is the first and foremost primary scoring criteria and control or a combination of ring generalship, effective aggression, and defense is the secondary scoring criteria. Here we go. And I wanted to talk about scoring areas because I see a lot of people, and this for them sure happens with Mayweather, scoring uh, Mayweather's rabbit punches, his slaps, Mayweather hitting you on the neck, hitting you on the kidneys, um, hips, below the belt. People score all that as if, as if they were legal punches because they don't know what legal punches are. 
scoring area, right? For a punch to be legal, it has to land in the scoring area, as defined by the Association of Boxing Commissions. From the top of the head moving down, splitting the ear. So basically, if you draw a line all around the head from one ear to the next, but making sure it's vertical and includes the top of the head, obviously, and the bottom of your chin, if you connect the ears with this imaginary line, everything in front of the ears is a scoring area, right? So if you're landing on the ear, uh, that's borderline. But if you're landing anywhere behind the ear, high on the head, low on the head, neck, right? That's no longer a scoring area. The punches landed forward of the middle of the ears are counted as a scoring punch. For the body, mentally take away the arms and run the imaginary line from the shoulders down the side of, to the navel or hip area, right? Punches landed forward of the imaginary line are counted as scoring punches. So from the belly button up all the way to the top of the shoulders and in front of that. And including the top of the shoulders, which sometimes happens. More inadvertently than anything. No one really aims their punches there, you know what I mean? So if you're landing on someone's back, anywhere on their back, that those aren't legal punches. And Andre Ward, for example, got a ton of credit for quote-unquote body punches when he was landing below the belt, below the navel, and on Sergei Kavalyov's back. Instead of being warned for fouling, People were actually counting those as scoring blows, right? Because of affirmative action and the fact that guys like Andre Ward don't have the boxing skill to compete at the highest level. Clean, effective punching in the scoring area should always be the determining factor. If unable to make a definitive, definitive determination as to who landed the cleaner punches, then judge should base on control so only if you cannot split between the two fighters who was the more effective puncher right only in the case of where they landed the same amount of punches or the effectiveness of their punches was roughly equal or difficult to split them by that's when you defer to the secondary scoring criteria like defense ring generalship and effective aggressiveness Right? And effective aggressiveness is simply the fact, if, if your opponent is running away from you, you're the effective aggressor. You don't have to land any punches to be the effective aggressor. Why? Because it's a separate scoring criteria. Clean and effective punching is one scoring criteria. Okay? Effective aggression is a separate scoring criteria. But again, people have combined the two, looking to give these Amero bums unfair advantages and you know bestow upon them affirmative action because they're not good enough to win within the rules you understand the ring general is the guy that's in control of the center of the ring either you keep your opponent out of the center of the ring or you keep them trapped there by circling them close basically yourself staying more or less in the center of the ring, not gliding along the ropes or running away, but keeping them trapped in the center of the ring or keeping you staying in the center of the ring and keeping your opponent uh, on the ropes or close to them, okay? Defense is self-explanatory. Defense isn't running away from your opponent, turning a three-minute round into a one-minute round or a 30-second round. No. Defense is when you're throwing punches, when you're in punching range and or throwing punches, and your opponent is throwing back at you and not being able to hit you because you're moving your head, you're blocking his punches, you know, you're slipping, you're countering. That's defense. Running away, bending below the waist, clinching, fouling, that's not defense. Effective punching can be defined as, quote, legal punches that have the immediate or cumulative impact potential to contribute toward the end of the bout with immediate impact potentially weighing more heavily than cumulative, right? So when Mayweather and Pacquiao looked like Mayweather also landed on Pacquiao, but we saw Pacquiao for sure landing on Mayweather in that last exchange. So Mayweather threw some punches at Pacquiao that didn't land, and then finally one of them kind of did. But Pacquiao stayed in punching range, right? Mayweather's punch didn't push him out of range. Pacquiao slipping the punch, 
he didn't step out of range, right? He didn't, he didn't get away from the punch. He basically walked through the punch because it wasn't a very effective punch and landed his own punch, sending Mayweather back. Pacquiao was the only effective puncher in that specific instance, thereby winning the exchange. Anyway, you could go read that article for yourself. It's pretty interesting. But I also wanted to talk a little bit about the rules of boxing as listed by BoxRec. Because a lot of people don't seem to know these rules when they're scoring fights. Anyway, the rules of boxing vary from jurisdiction to jurisdiction and whether it's on an amateur or professional bout. A violation of the following rules is considered a foul and can result in a warning, point deduction, or disqualification by the referee. You cannot hit opponent below the belt, hold, trip, kick, headbutt, wrestle, bite, spit on, or push your opponent, right? Something that Andre Ward and Mayweather do all the time. Hitting below the belt, holding is illegal. The amount of people who somehow seem to believe that holding is legal is retarded. It's not. It's a foul. It's something that can get you disqualified. Tripping your opponent, i.e. stepping on their feet, or just outright tripping them. Kicking like Andre Ward to Sergei Kavalyev when he kneed him in the face, right? Headbutting, something that Andre Ward does all the time. Mayweather sometimes. Erislan Dilara all the goddamn time. James DeGale was just doing it the other day. Wrestling. You cannot body up with your opponent and push him back. That's wrestling. You cannot grab your opponent and push him back. That's wrestling. You cannot run into your opponent and tackle his ass. That's wrestling. It's all illegal. The only thing that should be making contact with your opponent's body and only in the scoring area should be the knuckles of your fist. That's all. Pushing is illegal. All these things are illegal. You cannot hit with your head, shoulder, forearm, or elbow. Right? Something that Mayweather does a lot. He slaps with the forearm to the back of the neck, to the side of the head, on the ear. Those are all illegal maneuvers that American fighters practice in the gym. These, that's, this is all the so-called slick fighting. It looks to an untrained eye like, like they're actually landing a punch, you know, or a drunk eye, or somebody who's not really paying attention, like Hamed from BDA or used to be from the BDA, right? That, that's why it's called slick, because if you're fast enough, if, if it's quote-unquote borderline enough, it could maybe pass as a legal blow to an untrained eye or a corrupt referee or corrupt judges, right? That's why it's called slick, because it's, you're so fast sometimes, and it doesn't, you're, you're trying to make it look accidental, right? To where you get away with it. Right? That's called slick fighting. Okay? But professional judges and referees, uh, they're trained to be able to recognize this. And the only reason why they don't is because they're either incompetent or more likely corrupt. You cannot punch your opponent's back. Oh, wait. You cannot hit with an open glove. The inside of the glove, the wrist, the backhand, or the side of the hand. The only thing that's legal are the knuckles making impact with your opponent in legal area. So when Mayweather was landing those slap left hooks on Pacquiao and getting credit, those were not legal blows because he wasn't turning over his left hook because he never turns over his left hook. His left hook hasn't scored since he knocked out Ricky Hatton with it. Mayweather has not landed a scoring left hook since he knocked out Ricky Hatton with it. I exaggerate. I'm not saying he's never landed with his knuckles since, but 80, 90% of his left hooks are slaps. He lands with the wrist, the inside of the glove, the open glove, the side of the glove, the backhand, or the side of the hand. He doesn't land with the knuckles. 90% of the time, Mayweather doesn't land his left hook with the knuckles. So 90% of Mayweather's, and look, it's a rough estimate, 90% of Mayweather's left hooks are not not only are they not legal, not scoring blows, he should be getting warned for this shit. You understand? You cannot punch your opponent's back or the back of his neck or neck, his head or neck or the kidneys. You understand? So you got to land in the scoring area. Like 
Anthony Joshua versus Vladimir Klitschko. They stopped the fight on Anthony Joshua landing his wrist or the open glove to the back of Klitschko's head and neck. Those were illegal blows. Those were rabbit punches. They were illegal because they weren't landed with the knuckles and they were illegal because they weren't landed in the scoring area. So one of those blows was two fouls potentially. You understand? Anyway... You could go read the rest of these rules. I just wanted to talk about mostly knowing the rules as it relates to scoring fights. And unfortunately, most boxing fans out there, especially the young ones, they don't know how to score fights. Why? Because they don't know what a legal punch is. Okay? And this became blatantly obvious in the second Andre Ward Cavalio fight. That became blatantly obvious as if the first fight wasn't enough. That became blatantly obvious in Joshua Klitschko and Wilder Ortiz when both guys won their fights on rabbit punch slaps. Wrist shots to the back of the head and neck. That's how they won their fights. So, there are still, unfortunately for all of you fanboys out there, boxing purists left out there who are interested in Pure boxing, not that dirty, slick shit that Andre Ward does, but pure boxing. And we just know how to score fights, and you don't. But if you're okay with dirty fighting, don't ever complain about it, and don't ever complain about PEDs. Because taking banned substances is just as illegal as landing a rabbit punch. So if you have a problem with one, you have to have a problem with the other. Except, and this is where I give a break to the people who think that PEDs should be legal. Except there is nothing in the Marcus of Queensberry rules about PEDs being illegal. There's nothing in the rules of boxing that says that PEDs are illegal. And if you look at 99.9% .9 of boxing history, PEDs have always been legal. Always, even when they had this so-called testing, they covered up all the positive drug tests, just as in the case of Roy Jones Jr. and Richard Hall. So, here's a boxing lesson for all of you dweebs who don't know how to score boxing matches and get into your feelings and get all butt hurt when somebody makes a film study in slow motion for all of you slow pokes to show you what a legal punch is, what an illegal punch is, to show you what a clean and effective punch is versus what a graze and not a scoring blow is. Or a blow in not the scoring area is. That's why it's imperative to look at the film rather than listen to what some dweeb online has to say. And the fact that so many people out there ridicule the science because this is scientific. Looking at the film and investigating the empirical evidence is scientific. The fact that all these clowns attack and renounce the scientific approach to boxing, like a film study, tells you everything you need to know about those people. That they're driven by emotion. They're driven by feeling. They're driven by fallacies, such as a popular fallacy, the popular fallacy. They're driven by things that have nothing to do with actual factual boxing or the sweet science. I really hope this video... <laughs> told you I got another one. <laughs> I really hope this video helps you guys understand the science of boxing how to score fights, and what is legal, and what is not. I hope this helps you guys distinguish between pure boxing and slick boxing. And, and, how, and helps you understand how these two have been molded into one to give the Amaro bomb cheater a chance in winning these fights. When in reality, he doesn't possess the boxing skill, i.e. the pure boxing skill, to win these fights. And guess what? Most of them never did. Thank you for listening. Let me know what you think. I'm out.